welcome to a brand new episode of WSI TV. Enjoy the show! Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of WSI TV. Um, I'm joined today by Taylor um, for another episode of Informer Spotlight. Yes. Hi, um, how are you? I'm good. How are you doing today? Pretty good. Pretty good. All right. So as always, we have to remind you guys to go on to the WSITV.com website um, and sign up for our free daily newsletters um, through the WSITV vault. Mm. Um, so today we're going to be talking about identity theft. Yes. Um, do you want to give us a little bit of an introduction? Yes. So today we're going to be talking about specifically how you can make $80,594 on identity theft. Um, and that probably sounds like a very large number, which <laughs> don't worry, we're going to break that down for you, how you can exactly get that payout. Um, and we're also going to walk you through just identity theft in general and how you can protect yourself. Um, so yeah, let's yeah. let's get into it. Um, so I think it's important to point out that we're not going to actually be teaching you how to steal people's identities. Yes, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> because it does sound a little bit like that. Yes. Um, we're just going to teach you how to profit off of other people's mistakes, basically. Essentially, yeah. um, and protect yourself from making those same mistakes. Mm -hmm. um, so let's get into it. Yeah. Um, so first and foremost, what is identity theft? Very good um, question. Yeah, so basically it's the easiest crime ever um, yeah. because you don't ever have to have physical contact with the person mm -hmm. that you are stealing from. Um, and I actually read a statistic the other day that said that more Americans today are worried about a cyber attack than mm -hmm. a physical attack. Yes. Um, and that's pretty Which frightening. Is pretty scary, yeah. Yeah, so if you yeah. want to tell us a little bit more about identity theft and what this crime looks like. Yeah, of course. So uh, it looks like someone looking over your shoulder in the grocery store while you're putting your credit card into pay. It looks like someone stealing your mail out of your mailbox. Um, it could be as little as you sending an email and they get your information from that. Um, the easiest crime ever is because it's so easy for these scam artists to get a hold of your information. Mm -hmm. And all they need is one piece of it to open a new credit card in your name or buy a house even, or even commit yeah. crimes under your name as opposed to their own. Um, and then your entire kind of life falls to pieces. Uh, your credit can be affected, your job offers that you're um, it, it, like interviewing for, they can do credit checks for that. Um, and even just your life in general can be affected by this. Absolutely. So it's definitely a pretty bad thing to happen to you and we're yes. gonna try and make sure that it doesn't. <laughs> yeah. um, but it is very common and it does happen to basically anyone, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, so we're just gonna talk a little bit about the prevention. Yes from identity theft. Um, we don't want it to happen to you. It's very, very common, as Taylor said. Yeah. yeah. Um, so how are we going to make you money off of this? Yes, that's, that's the, the big question. The million dollar question, right? Um, so yes, you're not going to be walking into a store and stealing someone's credit card numbers. Um, that's not what we mean by making money off of identity mm -hmm. theft. Um, but you can't expect to make money off of anything without protecting what you already have. Um, identity theft prevention is really difficult. Um, there are so many different ways that it can fall through and you can still become a victim, but we're gonna try and walk you through everything that, that you can do to avoid um, losing any part of your identity to someone that would use it for their own financial gain. Absolutely, especially so. in today's world yeah. where it's surrounded by technology and your exactly. life is basically uploaded. So we're gonna teach you how to make mm -hmm. sure that all that information is protected and safe, even the stuff that does have to go digital. Exactly, yes. So, statistics of identity theft. Here's yeah. where it gets a little bit scary. Yeah, but. just as bad, <laughs> yeah. So, 4.3% of Americans had their identities stolen, mm -hmm. and 6 out of 10 American companies and government agencies have been hacked. Um, a large number of companies are not prepared for cyber attacks, mm -hmm. and the individual usually isn't informed on how to be protected. So, yeah. it can be yeah. dangerous. <laughs> and yeah. um, what is that? About 330 hours, and $1,378 is the average cost of being hacked or having yes. your identity stolen. So. Yeah. So it's yeah. a lot of hours. It's all that waiting on the phone and trying mm -hmm. to figure things out, canceling your credit card, yes, trying to yes. prove that you didn't make the purchase. Yeah. All of that. So yeah. Exactly. Um, it's the easiest crime, and we're going to tell you a little bit about why. Mm -hmm. um, why is it so easy for people to get away with this? Yeah. So the internet is the yeah. big answer. Everything <laughs> is digital. You don't have to physically steal anything. You can mm -hmm. go online, and if you know where to look, you can get this information. Yeah, so Taylor, exactly. if you want to tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, of course. But obviously, as Leo said earlier, your information now is almost entirely digitized. Um, you 
set up a doctor's appointment on the internet. You call your bank through an online chat and it's mm -hmm. just everything is online and you're expected to put in your name and your date of birth and even your social security number into these online forums mm -hmm. and you don't know if they're secure. Um, and what we've noticed is even on the internet, it may not even be that someone is stealing something from you and you don't notice. You can actually purchase a social security number online. It's completely legal. Um, there's no law in the United States prohibiting the sale of social security numbers. So if someone were to get a hold of yours, um, it's about $49 for anyone who's looking for one. <laughs> you can just go and purchase it. Um, a date of birth, if you wanted anyone's information like that, is $26. And they also have on these online websites that are catering to identity thieves, um, the full package is only $150 to steal someone's entire identity. So it's pretty terrifying how easy yeah. it is on the internet for someone to get a hold of your entire life. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so like Taylor said, all it takes is one thing. Yeah. And then the rest of it can be accessed. Because think about if you're ever trying to log into one of your accounts when you got locked out and you have to know that security question. Or yeah. if you don't remember your password, you can put in your birth date or your credit card number. Mm -hmm. if you don't have your address correct, stuff yeah. like that. There are all yeah. these checks and balances that are supposed to help you. But it also means that somebody else that has access to one part of your information can get access to the rest of it. Exactly. Yes. So, for example, your birth certificate, all you need to order another one is a name and a return address. So, if I have someone else's name, say I want to order a new birth certificate under the name Leah Warren, all I needed to do is put her name and put my address and bam, her new birth certificate comes to my house. And then I become you. And it's super easy. Nobody's really stopping anyone mm -hmm. from doing this. And that's your life that's just been transferred into somebody else's and they can do with it whatever they want. Absolutely. So, it's and then obviously, scary. Yes, yeah. And then obviously we know that credit cards are a big yes. proponent for this mm -hmm. and it happens all the time where your credit card gets hacked or stolen and yes. there are all these erroneous charges that show up. Yeah. Um, and that's when you call your credit card company and mm -hmm. cancel immediately or freeze. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it turns out that a lot of credit card companies don't even verify the driver's license before they issue the card in your name. Mm -hmm. um, so it makes it really easy for people to use that one piece of information mm -hmm. to get a hold of your credit card. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, with just your address, we can find 22 pieces mm -hmm. of sensitive information leg legally and publicly about you. Yes, which uh, is... That's just crazy. Yeah, it's unbelievable. But uh, with the internet, with everything being accessible the way it is, um, the book that we flashed up here earlier was by, uh, by Frank Abagnale Jr. Um, he's a FBI fraud expert, and he actually says this to his trainees when he's training new FBI agents in the mm -hmm. fraud unit, and he's explaining to them, like, how easy it is for people to get a hold of someone else's information and he'll ask one student for their address and the next morning he comes in with 22 pieces about them that nobody would think you would have access to and you do it's kind of really scary it's like crazy. how easy it is to get a hold of someone's Absolutely. information and you were saying to me earlier that you found a website where you can plug in your name and you mm -hmm. find out your name your current address your last five addresses yes, all the yes. sensitive information yeah um, so that's just, it's, it all is out there and it's kind of hard to get it back once yeah. it's out there. In very, the very difficult to get yeah. it back, yes. So the victims, who mm -hmm. are they and what are they going through? It's yes. another big part of this is who is the person that's being affected the most. Yeah. Um, so if you want to tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah. So, I mean, a victim could be anybody from someone who's a deceased relative that's already died and they, their name is still out in the system, even to a six-year-old child. Um, if their name exists and they have a social security number, someone can open a credit card account in that name. Someone can open a mortgage in that name. And then they have this whole other separate life that they have nothing to do with. Mm -hmm. And you can have a six-year-old with $150,000 in debt that they obviously have never accumulated mm -hmm. outside of like a toy store. Like, it's yeah. totally outrageous. But um, children are common victims because people are looking for vulnerable people or someone who wouldn't have a notice they wouldn't notice that the credit was disturbed because the six-year-old's not going to check their credit report. A mm -hmm. dead person's not going to check their credit report. So they're looking for those things that they can go under the radar with that. Yeah. But just yeah. to be even more specific, a victim can be anybody, though. Yeah, absolutely. It really is anyone. Um, and especially the statistics about children being involved mm -hmm. in this. It's frightening. I mean, it, it makes sense in a very terrible way. Yeah, um, exactly. Where kids are very vulnerable and they don't have any reason to be checking these things. Yeah. So it's easier to get away with it. But it's going to affect that child when mm -hmm. they grow up because it's going to be their name that they're filing under. Yeah. And then all of this debt and the mortgage and all this, this information is going to pop like, up and yeah. become theirs. Yeah. yeah. Um, so... As we said, anyone can fall victim to this. Yes. Um, there are some people that are more vulnerable, but we're gonna make sure that you're not among. Yeah, not one number. of those people, yeah. All right, so what happens to the victims? That's an important thing to talk about, yes. um, just to show you how important it is to not let this happen to you. Yeah. 
Um, so Taylor, if you want to take it from there. Yeah, yeah. So we told you earlier how difficult and how much time and how much effort you have to put into to try and recover your identity if it is stolen. Um, we said something like 330 hours trying to dispute charges and mm -hmm. trying to close accounts you didn't make. But the average identity theft victim doesn't realize that they've been compromised until 13 months after. Um, which obviously is a lot of time for some damage yeah. to be done. Um, someone has opened countless accounts in someone else's name and they can open mortgages, they can buy cars, they can do all these different mm -hmm. things in the span of 13 months and you have no idea about it. Um, that's why we're gonna try and give you some tips as to how you can become more aware. Um, but these loans and things, they can be irreversible. Mm -hmm. um, it may be something that if it's gone on so long, there's nothing you can do. Absolutely, yeah. So. It we're going to talk a little bit now about how it happens, mm -hmm. um, just a little bit more. There are some really, really common ways that you might recognize where you're going to come across in your daily life. Chances mm -hmm. where someone's trying to reach out and steal your information. Yeah. There's phishing, shoulder surfing, scams. So phishing yes. is usually through emails. Yes. Um, does that include physical mail? It can, okay. yes. Yeah. So it's when someone reaches out to you trying to ask for money or information about mm -hmm. you, and when you respond to them, they grab a hold of that little bit of information that you give them. It'll usually come under the guise of unpaid credit scores yeah. or um, a chance to win a vacation, yeah. um, someone in need donating to a cause that doesn't exist, yeah. stuff like that. It can yeah. be anything. Mm -hmm. um, They're just trying then, to get your money out of mm -hmm. your hands, essentially. Exactly. Whatever they can say to get you to pay into something. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So. Can you see your house yeah. on our lovely map? On our lovely map right here. Could you yeah. find your house over here if you were looking hard enough? Probably um, not, but an identity thief can. Yeah, it's very, very easy uh, for them. Yeah, so they know yeah. where to look. In the mm -hmm. digital sphere, you can zoom in and pinpoint yeah. who you're going to affect mm -hmm. and get a hold of all of that information. Um, so this, at this point, it's not just an invasion of pri privacy. Yeah. It's dangerous. This yeah. is frightening information, and yeah. we don't want to scare you guys away. Yeah, no, we, we just don't. want to teach you how to be protected, and yeah. we're going to teach you how to profit off of it. That's yeah. the bottom line here. Yeah, that's what we're not only for. are we going to help you prevent losing money, we're going to teach you how to make money. Mm -hmm. There's that silver lining yeah. for you. <laughs> <laughs> so. There is only a one in 700 chance that an identity thief will be prosecuted, which is just a really upsetting number. That's crazy, that's, yeah. Yeah, because it's so hard to track these things. Because yeah. when it's all usually in the digital sphere, mm -hmm. there's no way to find a person. And there's no yeah. fingerprints. There's no yeah. backtracking to find the person that has exactly, done this. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, so we're going to teach you how to prevent it. Yeah. So we have a big long list yes. of all the best ways to keep your stuff safe, keep mm -hmm. yourself safe, keep your money safe, keep your life safe. Yeah. Um, so Taylor, if you want to take it off. Yeah. Here. So yeah, we're going to take you through this list. I have 20 steps to prevent identity theft. Um, the first one is probably going to be the most important as usual. Um, check your credit reports regularly. Um, you are entitled to one free credit report every year, mm -hmm. but what most people don't know is there are three different credit bureaus that store those reports for you. So you technically are entitled to three free credit reports every year. Mm -hmm. So what uh, experts recommend doing is ordering one in January, and then you order the next one in May, and you order the last one in September. So that way you're getting that yearly look at your credit. Mm -hmm. And it's not just one thing that you look at at the end of the year and you're like, oh, it looks fine. But that way you can catch, if someone steals your credit card in January, you find out that same month. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're trying to reduce that 13 month sentence that yeah. you're not likely to see it. Um, so definitely, definitely look into how you can order your free credit report. You are entitled to three every year. Um, definitely take advantage of that to make sure you're monitoring Absolutely. all of the things that are happening. It's under your name, it's under your social security number, all of those things are gonna be listed there. So it's basically a snapshot of your life that you can make sure it's everything you've done and not something someone else mm -hmm. has done. Um, the next one is gonna be don't give out your social security number. Um, there are some places where you do have to give it out and they will say mm -hmm. like we need this from you for legal purposes, which yes, that's valid, um, but it's not as many as you think. Yeah. Uh, it's really just your employer, the DMV, the welfare department, a bank, and a brokerage. Those yeah. five places are the only ones that are actually legally required or allowed to ask you for your social security number. Absolutely, and you were telling me, I didn't even know this, yeah. that you aren't required to give your social security number when you go to the doctor. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times they'll have a form where you can fill that out and mm -hmm. they make it seem mandatory, but it's not. Mm -hmm. Legally, um, they're not allowed to ask you for it. Yeah, so, so yeah. it's an interesting. Kind of scary yeah. how easily it can be solicited mm -hmm. from you. So guard that close, we will yeah. say that. Um, and then the next third step is going to be protect your computer. We've been talking about technology and how easy it is to get access to your information on, on your computer and anywhere online. Mm -hmm. um, so making sure that if you're using a wireless connection that it's secure mm -hmm. um, and your computer should be protected by virus services, virus like uh, protection and malware and all of those things that come in the cyber security yeah. package. So definitely look into those if you're getting 
yeah. into the digital world for yeah, sure. Yeah, and that all can sound really intimidating, but usually if you go to Best Buy or wherever you go to mm -hmm. get your computer, Anywhere, really. laptop, yeah. phone, they'll offer you a package and they'll mm -hmm. install it for you and it's very hands-free and it's yes. definitely worth the cost. For sure. Um, it's usually a very, very small cost, $20 oh, yeah. installation fee, it depends on the service, Yeah. but it's a very easy thing to have on your computer at all times. And definitely worth it. So, yes. yes. Um, so next, tracking your billing cycles. Yes. This goes along with checking your credit, credit report. It does, yes. Um, yeah, so you just want to make sure that you're checking how much you're paying on every bill when it comes. Uh, make sure that every charge on there you actually made. Yes. Um, that's, that's one of the biggest important. ways that it can happen is if mm -hmm. you let one small price slip, it'll start building up yeah. even more. Um, and I've actually had my identity stolen before. Oh, wow. Um, and the way that I caught it very, very early was on that bill. There were these oh little charges of like $2 here and then $5 and then $10 just mm -hmm. to see if they could let it slide yeah, through. to see if it would go And it noticed. did the first month yeah. um, and I didn't catch it. And then when it got up to $10, I was like, I did not <laughs> that was not me. Was yeah, not me. Exactly. <laughs> um, and I caught it early, but that's one of the ways that they'll try to make sure that they're in the clear yeah. to use your information is they'll start with small charges and then yeah. there'll be one really big charge or yeah, something like exactly, that. Exactly, yeah. They're testing the waters to mm -hmm. see if you're going to notice. So yeah, that's definitely a super mm -hmm. important step to take to make sure that you're not being solicited for something you didn't spend. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And along with that, just examine all of your financial statements from any account, not yes, just everything. billing, just anything that has to do with your money. Make mm -hmm. sure you're looking at it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, and guard your mail from theft. A lot of people don't think about this these yeah. days, but yeah. a lot of sensitive information is on your mail. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For so. sure. Yeah. Um, and then next we have invest in a shredder and you yes. were telling me a little bit <laughs> yes. about this one. Uh, yeah, you'd be surprised how easy it is to reconstruct a paper that's been just shredded like vertically. Um, it's called a spaghetti shredder if you didn't know. Um, and it's actually very simple if you just have those like the remnants of whatever paper it was with your name and your address and your credit card mm -hmm. number on it. Those things are super easy for someone who's rummaging around in the trash to get a hold of. And I also didn't know this, it's perfectly legal to dumpster dive. So if you do throw that into the trash, um, someone is perfectly obligated to go get it if they want yeah. it. So you definitely should invest in a shredder that obliterates your information yeah. if you're throwing it away. So we want one that makes your important stuff look like confetti. Yeah. So yeah, that's definitely something you should look into. Right, and then practicing safe shopping. I actually didn't know this one. Yeah. Um, to look for that HTTPS yes. dot dot dash dash. Yes, exactly. Um, yes, I didn't know that that was a security measure yeah. um, mm -hmm. until you brought it to my attention. Yeah. Um, so always look for a secure site when you're shopping. Don't go on any sites mm -hmm. that could possibly be hiding. Uh, they could be just trying to get a hold of your credit card. Yeah, it could be a exactly. fake product. Yeah. Look for the security sites. Um, and then avoiding sketchy ATMs. Yes. Um, if it's not a specific bank that put it there, especially if it's not your bank, mm -hmm. your information might be open to someone else yes. taking it. And then next you're gonna wanna make sure you're keeping an eye on unexpected calls and letters. Um, you should know who's calling you and who's gonna mm -hmm. send you mail and those kinds of things. Um, just like with your bills, if something's out of the ordinary, it's probably not supposed to be there. Um, more often than not, it's just a solicitor, but it could also be someone who's looking to solicit your information. So making sure that you're not giving away anything that you don't want to keep close to the chest mm -hmm. um, and just being cautious of someone that you don't recognize that's trying to contact you in any way. Yeah, and this isn't to say that everyone that's sending you letters or calling you yeah. is not everyone. out to get you. Yeah. Um, sometimes it could be something great, it could be a normal solicitor. Yeah. It's, it's just specifically when they start asking you kind of sketchy questions or yeah. if they're asking you for very specific information. Like mm -hmm. if you get a letter that says that they need your social security number, yeah, that's probably a little, don't give yeah. it to them. Yeah. Um, and then along with that, putting real passwords on all of your accounts. Mm -hmm. um, this is again in the digital sphere. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah, so you want to make sure that you have really legitimate passwords and that they are, if possible, all different and try not to write them down anywhere, mm -hmm. um, especially not on your computer, because then if someone hacks your computer, they have access to everything. Yes. <laughs> um, but stay away from the one, two, three, four, or zero, 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 zero passwords. Yeah, yeah. try and make them um, unique to yourself mm -hmm. and also something you'll remember, because um, you don't want to have a sitting duck of all of your passwords yeah. written down and all someone needs is that and they have a key to your entire life. Absolutely. So yeah, it's a definitely a, a science when it comes to yeah. picking a good password, but yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And then um, keeping your credit card close. Mm -hmm. um, don't let anybody look over your shoulder and steal that number off of there. Yeah. Don't use it in an unfamiliar place. Yeah. Um, if you don't feel safe, if you feel like someone's watching you, if you're on a website that you don't necessarily trust, probably mm -hmm. don't input your number. Yeah. 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 
Um, and then using safe checks and using them sparingly. Mm -hmm. um, so if you want to talk a little bit about this yeah, one. Yeah, so physical checks are probably not as common as they used to be. Um, mm -hmm. Some people may still carry a checkbook with them, which is totally fine, obviously, if that's how you like to do your finances. Um, but it is very, very easy to steal identity information mm -hmm. from a check because it's just a little piece of paper with everything you need to know. Yep. Um, so making sure that if you do use them, you're using them in places you trust and you're using them sparingly. Um, you can steal a credit card number just as easy as you can steal a check, but just be aware how much easier mm -hmm. it is to get a hold of something like that. Yes, absolutely. Um, then make sure that your home and office are secure because yeah. um, physical thieves can steal things to yeah. log on to your information in the digital sphere mm -hmm. and steal things that way. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it does, it does encroach upon the physical world. Yes, That's an important sure. thing to note. A lot for of people sure. think that if they're only in the physical world, if they're not on social media, if they're yeah. not on these digital sites, they think that their information is safe, but people can get things from you in the real world exactly. and then take it beyond yeah. into the digital world. And, and then you won't notice if they're on the digital absolutely. world because you're not. Absolutely. So they have this whole other persona you don't know about, mm -hmm. like, which is not good. Yeah, and then also only carrying what you need. Yes. Um, this is a big one that I don't really think about, so yeah. it's something to remember. Yeah, you definitely um, should. If you're just carrying your wallet around, you keep all of your credit cards in your wallet, and then your wallet is stolen, it's all gone. Everything's gone, yeah. If you have a dozen credit cards, bring one. <laughs> yeah, only bring the one that you need, yes. Um, and then canceling unused credit cards yeah. is a big one. Yeah, that is a really big one. Um, again, if you have a dozen credit cards, um, chances are you probably don't need them all. Um, you should definitely look into what it means for your credit score, but if you have a whole bunch of unused credit cards and you're carrying them around with you every day, it's mm -hmm. just an accident waiting to happen. Um, mm -hmm. Be careful how many you open and how many you carry with you and just get rid of the ones that you don't use because honestly yeah. it's just collateral damage at that point. Absolutely, and this is more billing statements to check too, so exactly. it's easier for something to slip through the cracks. Exactly. Um, and then opting out of spam and direct marketing. Mm -hmm. um, so this is another one that the more is in your mailbox, the more easy it is for a fisher to jump in and yeah. join that. And join in the, yeah. in the mix and you won't notice yeah, and absolutely. that's what they're counting on mm -hmm. so definitely opting out of things if you're being solicited for something that you don't want to buy just opt out um, mm -hmm. if you're looking for something to purchase go get it yourself because um, spam can just be spam and someone could just be selling something to you or it could be something yeah. a bit more nefarious so yeah and then always read privacy policies this yes. one is the worst because yes. they're long and it's the itty bitty type. <laughs> no fun. But, but anytime you're signing up for anything, especially online, yes. it is really, really important to look at all this because you could be signing your life away quite literally yeah. without knowing it. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then protecting deceased relatives. Yeah. Um, if you want to talk a little bit about this one, because I know yeah. you researched this. Yeah, so definitely when someone that's close to you or in your family or your friend group um, passes away, it's probably not what you're thinking about. And unfortunately, people are looking, they're expecting that. They're mm -hmm. hoping that you're focusing on your grief and on your loss and not on the fact that a name has just opened up mm -hmm. on the sphere of the identity world that they can use and they can abuse. Yeah. And you definitely should make sure that if someone around you does pass away, um, make sure that their credit report is not vulnerable, mm -hmm. making sure that the credit bureaus are aware of that death and that everything can be closed properly so that no cards or charges or anything that's not authorized is an open postmortem. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, it's very important. Um, and then placing fraud reports on all of your credit card yes. reports. Um, this is a really easy one. Um, I get these after what happened to yeah. me. Yeah, um, it's so anytime, really great. Yeah, it's just a really easy little notification. It can be an email, it can be a call, it mm -hmm. can be a text. Um, and it just pops up anytime they think there's something fishy going on. Yeah, so if there's exactly. something that was purchased in a different place um, yeah. from where you were located, um, or if you're on vacation in one place and someone purchased something somewhere different. Yeah, um, And this definitely. does mean that you have to let them know, yeah. let the credit card company know when you're traveling, but mm -hmm. that's a good thing to do anyway. It's good um, to have a dialogue for sure. Yeah, absolutely. To make sure that they know who you are and the purchases that you make and where you'd be making those purchases. I had something like that happen to me. I bought gas in another city when I was on a road trip and I got a text immediately saying, was this you in West yep. Palm Beach? And I was like, yes, that was me. Thank <laughs> you for checking. So yeah, it's definitely really good to have that set up for you. Super easy and it's mm -hmm. super convenient and it goes a long way in making sure absolutely. that nothing is going on that you're not aware of. Yeah. All right, so that was a lot of heavy. Yes, that was a lot. Breath, letting it off. We're going to get to the more fun but, stuff. Yes, now it's exciting. About how you're making money off of this. Yes. So we've taught you how to protect the money that you already have. We've taught you how to protect your life and your information. Mm -hmm. But we don't just want to do that. We yeah. want you guys to be able to profit off of this mm -hmm. and just steal from people that are stealing from everybody else. Yeah, it's but we're going to do it legally. Hood, but we're so. cool with it, yeah. <laughs> All right, so Taylor, if you want to take us through this, because yeah. I know that you're the one that found all this. <laughs> yeah. So. so yeah, the way that you can make 
money off of identity theft legally, mm -hmm. totally legally, <laughs> is buying into stocks that profit from identity theft takedowns. So I know we talked about that it's not really common, but it does happen. Mm -hmm. Um, and other bureaus that are involved in security measures, the ones that are involved in the credit reporting we mm -hmm. talked about, just the people in this business that are there as safeguards. So we can invest in them and Absolutely. you can make money off of them. So basically who we're talking about are the three credit bureaus that I mentioned earlier. Absolutely. But um, and it's important to note that this is a quickly growing industry. Yes, very Digitization much so. is taking over. Yeah. Um, so cybersecurity, credit bureaus, all yeah. these different protective services, um, as we enter more into the sphere of having all of our information uploaded, mm -hmm. we need more protection. And yeah. so this is a really, really great sector to be getting yeah. into at the ground floor. I would say you're kind of catching it early, yeah. which is also really good. Absolutely. But so we're going to talk a little bit about the stocks that we've found for you yeah. guys. Yeah. So what most recommendation services will do at this point is kind of just give you a bunch of the industry names and say, go pick one. They're all the same because you can get it on the ground floor and it'll be a good investment for you. Um, but that's actually not the best <laughs> advice. Mm -hmm. um, there are some companies that are doing really well and there are some that are not doing so well, even if they're in the same sector. So mm -hmm. we can sit here and tell you all you want that this new industry is great and it's got money in it for you. But if we don't point you in the right direction, you're going to be lost. And that's what most people are doing to their customers. What yeah. most recommendation services do, they just throw you in the deep end and say, good luck. <laughs> but uh, we're not going to do that. Uh, we do do some extra legwork for you to try and figure out what is the best investment and what is more likely to make you money. Mm -hmm. um, and so out of the three credit bureaus, the secret is only two of them have good looking charts. So yeah. those two are going to be TransUnion and Experian. Yeah. So on the next slide, we'll see. This chart is for TransUnion. It is one of the three major credit bureaus in the United States. As you can see, we're looking at this really great up curve right here. And it does dip a little bit in the middle, which the entire market dipped right yeah. there. So we're kind of used to seeing that in these charts. But what I'm really loving over here is this upwards action in the right corner. We've got this great support trend line up over here. And that really is good for us to get in. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and that's where we want to be at. So this one is a good pick for you. Yeah, and I mean, even though it did dip a little bit with mm -hmm. that market downturn, as you said, the entire market dipped. Yeah. And this one didn't drop nearly as far as some of the other yeah. stocks that we've looked at. Mm -hmm. um, and it bounced back real fast. Yeah, which is a good <laughs> thing. Yes. Yeah, so then our other one is Experian. Yes. Yeah, so this is a good looking chart too. Yes, as you can see, they both have that great climbing action. And we were talking about that dip before and Experian didn't even feel it. Um, didn't even flinch, which is a good thing. You do want some stocks that are resilient to the general market. Um, and we do have this awesome trend line in the right corner that's just like a staircase for it. Like yeah. it just goes straight up. So that's why we are looking at those two picks for you. But it is also because they have paid out very well in the past. Absolutely. So uh, for 100 shares, TransUnion paid out $1,434, mm -hmm. which is good. That's a nice little boost for you. But um, Experian, the chart that we last looked at, paid out $79,160 in the past, which is crazy. Yeah. Like, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, and that's how we're trying to get you to rob the identity thieves before they rob you. Absolutely. Um, so that's that's kind of how you get your profit. Yeah, there's this. your profit. You add those together and you've got your 80000 Yeah. Um, and that's a big number. Um, and you're just taking it right out from under the identity thieves' noses. Yeah. Um, yeah. So this is a really great way not only to protect your information and be informed mm -hmm. about this sector where people are getting into trouble, mm -hmm. but you're making money off of it yeah. as we find the solution. Yeah, which um, is obviously yeah. the goal, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, so this is your chance to yeah. get in on this, and we've given you the strongest charts that we've found. You mm. can always depend on us to yeah. give you those recommendations. Um, so, Taylor, thank you so much for all the research that yeah. you've done. Yeah, of course. Thank um, you. Yeah, it was, it was great talking to you today. Yeah. 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 Well, we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching the latest episode of WSI TV. Be sure to visit WSITV.com where you can subscribe for free with no contract and gain instant access to the secrets of self-made millionaires via the WSI TV vault. So go ahead and claim this gift for free now at WSITV.com. <laughs>